Welcome to Dojo Talks. Last week, we talked about the gender questions surrounding both U.S. chess and FIDE, as well as the cheating. Then, we thought we were done. But no, U.S. chess in particular, their response continues to be so bad that we have to talk about. There's a lot to say in terms of what this organization should be, how they should have reacted, and um, also maybe an opportunity for all of us in this crisis that U.S. chess could be used. We could use this crisis to reform U.S. chess. Now, let me just say, uh, to back it up, to kind of frame it, is that uh, when Kosi and I were at the U.S. Open, there was this lingering question. U.S. Open is where U.S. chess talks, get, gets together and talks about all their issues. Up until that event, there was just lingering questions about how they had poorly handled the situation, especially of Alejandro Ramirez, also St. Louis Chess Club, was also culpable. If you want to read more about that, I would say the Lee Chess post about that subject, you can find easily by Googling if you want to deep dive there. But basically, both of these institutions fail to act, to do anything after credible reports, multiple reports of Alejandro doing poor judgment, executing poor judgment with young women over a long period of time. And this was reported by Jen Shahade uh, ages ago. Jen had enough. She went public with it. And then this is the firestorm that's still resulting. U.S. chess, let me just say it this, I'm gonna make it as concise as possible. Both U.S. chess and St. Louis were pissed, still are, at Jen for doing what she did. They felt like they had it all under control. And obviously <laughs> they did not. Okay. Obviously, like wait another ten years, and we were totally cleaning this up, right? And so now we're getting some real defensive behavior. And um, I mean, just I'm gonna. I guess I'll read this thing. There's a little Facebook exchange that happened. It's unbelievable, and uh, I'll just read it, dude. Randy says Randy Bauer is the president of the board. You have an executive director who is Carol Meyer, and then you have people who are elected to the board. This man was elected, Randy Bauer. And he's talking about, uh, you know, people accusing, talking to people accusing the organization of doing something wrong. And this is what he says. I don't give a rat's behind about your amazement. You have done nothing substantial that I have observed for U.S. chess. Come back when you have, you know. And then he says, I am a 50-year benefactor, life member of U.S. chess. I've earned my right to talk to any U.S. chess member as I please. Meanwhile, when I did respond about your friend being assaulted, you asked me not to reveal details. Do you see the problem you have developed here? You are the epitome of the damned if you do, damned if you don't culture. It goes on. It goes on. The entitlement is especially what's driving people. It's absolutely insane here. So people are pissed. And... Uh, rightly so. And Jen responded, maybe Kosio will, you know, go into that. But basically, these people have this, they've fumbled the ball so amazingly, they are not taking responsibility at that US Open where me and Kosio were, we learned that they didn't, just, they weren't going to talk about it at all. They were going to say, we've done it. We've already dealt with this issue. It's behind us. And then obviously, it's just continuing to explode. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to I'm going to give it over to our boys, but that's just the first frame. Yeah, um, it should, we should say so that me those messages from Randy, those are directed at this guy, Sean Finn, who I don't know, but I believe he's like a chess player organizer. I think he um, was managing one of the, the pro chess league teams. So very much into the garden. I think garden the same pastors. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the context of that, I think Sean was um, was upset and frustrated because he uh, is in the process of, um, I guess, making another allegation that he wants U.S. chess to investigate. And he was frustrated that U.S. chess wasn't doing uh, enough. Uh, in some other case, I don't even know who it's like, neither Ramirez nor, nor uh, Gareev. Um, yeah. And so he's frustrated that they're not doing enough investigation on this like third case right after all this stuff has come out. And so that was Randy's response uh, 
to that. Yeah, which was quite, quite surprising for sure. As a lot of people have commented, like someone of like a position of power and U.S. chess definitely not looking like they've handled this situation well at all is kind of like, yeah, it just seemed like the worst possible public relations response. And now it's a total, it's a total fiasco. Um, Jesse, I don't think you mentioned it, but yeah, Ben Feingold came out and said he was canceling his membership, um, which was definitely a big step. And that definitely seemed as a result of the, uh, the Randy Bauer uh, Facebook rant. Um, actually, I wanted to say on last week, so last week we had a very interesting show. A lot of people messaged me about that podcast and came up to me in person here in St. Louis. <laughs> and so they found it uh, very, very interesting. So I feel like last week's episode was great. I mean, it was really uh, definitely seemed to um, uh, struck up a bunch of discussion in the community. I think people were um, people were a little upset with me for, quote, not having an opinion. But uh, mm. that was kind of, I feel like I did express an opinion, but... I, I, did, I did a couple of things wrong. Number one, I let Jesse drive the narrative, which is always a mistake <laughs> with oh. Jesse. Never let him frame the conversation because uh. then people just, they drown out everything else. So I actually did give a very specific opinion last week, a very measured one that I think um, was quite reasonable. Like I said, both U.S. Chess and St. Louis haven't done enough in terms of transparency and like letting the public know that they actually treated these investigations seriously because they didn't just they just didn't release a lot of info especially in u.s chess's case they released this article saying like they did everything fine and no one did anything wrong and they're not culpable at all and people were of course very very agitated by that um and now this thing with like randy it's like coming out that it's like yeah they really looks like they didn't handle this seriously um at all um okay Okay, yeah. so wait a second, though. So I said something that people in St. Louis were pissed off about, apparently, and they came to you and you were like, wait, boss, that was Jesse that said it, not me. Is that what you were saying? No, no, no one was pissed at, <laughs> at me. Uh, no, no, for the most okay. part, people were just like, um, actually, multiple people came up to me and, and were like, oh, I listened to the, the podcast. <laughs> I had the same response with everyone. I was like, yeah, it was a spicy one. <laughs> I just looked to find different people. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know if people were uh, uh, pissed at us or, or anything. Um, I think actually we all got flagged in that episode. Well, I think that the biggest one that came from St. Louis was Kristen Chirilla, who, you know, was good friends with Alejandro uh, for years, wrote on the comments. It was pissed at me that I was accusing him of encouraging predatory behavior. And I... You know, I said, dude, I was like, you must have seen something. You must have heard people talking. I don't know if that means I, I, I meant, said he was encouraging predatory behavior, but I was just responding to the fact that in his podcast with Fabi, they were both like, oh, we didn't see anything. And I was and I was just like, no, buddy, at the bare minimum, this is cause for reflection, right? At the bare minimum, you can't just be like, no, I didn't see anything. You have to at least ask yourself, well, what about that one time? <laughs> what about that thing that we heard? You have to at least go back and and ask yourself. Wait a second, you know there were. I don't. I don't like this argument honestly because I feel like yeah. there's a lot of it's like a lot of confirmation bias. You know, you could get mm -hmm. canceled tomorrow, and then they'll come to me and David and ask, "Oh, did you guys ever see anything about Jesse that was weird?" And what are we supposed to say? Yeah, I don't know. He's talking about like mm -hmm. people tasting his coconuts all the time and giving people the bone, <laughs> but I don't know. We never saw anything like. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's it's a little bit okay. unfair. To, I, 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 it feels and I was like a witch hunt. I, this is the thing I, that I kind of wanted to say last week. It's like I don't like witch hunts. I don't like participating mm -hmm. in them, especially online witch hunts. It's always like there's someone on the day that everyone just dunks on relentlessly, mm -hmm. and it's like I often don't feel like that's helping. You know. Well, here's 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 the thing. We don't we don't need to have a witch hunt, right? But. We, we are looking for things to be better in the future than they are now, right? So you're looking for people to take accountability for things. Nobody has to have done things perfectly in the past necessarily, right? You could say like, oh, shoot, like I wondered about this thing and next time I'll, I will, I will pursue it instead of just wondering about it, right? Or USCF could publish 
the report, the the investigation they did of themselves that found that they did nothing wrong, right? Like, so I think what Jesse or I would like to see is some amount of self-reflection and honesty. I might be more of an honesty freak than Jesse, but you can you can speak to that yourself, Jesse. But I'd like to see people sort of coming forward and saying like the most honest things that they can and reflecting on how things could be better in the future. And if, and so far, has anybody other than Alejandro said anything about anything they could have done better? Has a single person said, oh, I could have interceded or, oh, we should have lit, taken it more seriously or, as far as I can tell, every single public response has been like Alejandro operated on his own in a way where no one had any idea and all the victims didn't know how to file their claims or complaints properly or we were handling the complaints properly and, you know, everything was running his course correctly and there was no problem that he was continuing to coach, you know, women's teams after his behavior, right? Like. I'm not saying we need to hunt these people down and punish them, right? But you would want to see people – like someone ha – there must be at least one person somewhere in the world who could be like, oh, shoot, we could have like read Jen's complaint or, oh, I could have followed up on Jen's complaint or I could have CC'd the person who picked the coach for the team. or Like there, there has to be somebody who could have said or done something, right? So mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think Jesse or I have any idea – have any particular desire to find somebody and punish them. I think Jesse's not a very pro punishment kind of person. Um, but, but well, I mean, except in the case of like bets and things like that, but, uh, <laughs> but I think that it's reasonable that we would want to see s some indication that someone somewhere is thinking about maybe changing something. Yeah, no, no I mean, it, it's very clear that something has to change. I mean, the, the biggest thing, um, was, so going back to that Facebook thread, um, Randy has this like crazy argument with a with a U.S. chess member. Even if Randy is like 100% in the right, which he clearly isn't, it's like it's just such a terrible look. Um, uh, Jen Shahadi chimed in on the on the Facebook thread and, and said that she, because uh, Randy was trying to say that they acted as soon as they got like an official complaint filed, and, and Jen was saying that she warned multiple people. Um, including, I believe she said, the executive director, uh, which is not Randy, uh, maybe someone else on the board. So clearly, and here's the thing, now everyone's like dunking on Randy. He's probably not the only one who maybe could have acted differently here, right? Like almost certainly he's not the only person. And and that's why, I mean, I'm sure everyone is terrified of taking responsibility. They're now seeing the reaction that Randy is getting. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's clear, uh, according to Jen, like she mentioned it to, to multiple people and then even followed up, um, when Ramirez was chosen for the, the U S uh, Olympia team last year, she even like followed didn't up and it's like, like, didn't she say when she reported something, she got some assurance that like, while they were investigating, he wouldn't be put in this position anymore. And then he was put so. in the position. She was shocked to see it. And that's why she followed up, um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe the atmosphere of witch hunts makes people reluctant to take responsibility for whatever responsibility well, of they course. have. I mean, there was even people last week on Reddit blaming uh, David for, for not saying something earlier about this T-shirt that he saw Ramirez wearing 13 years ago. <laughs> there was literally a comment uh, on Reddit with like a lot of upvotes that was like, because well, you mentioned that you, you saw him wearing this like inappropriate shirt. And they were yeah. like, why did he wait 13 years to speak up about this? You know, so there's always going to be. Yeah, I exactly. mean, <laughs> exactly. I'm, sure, I'm sure it's not a reason to start an investigation. Um, that's the thing with these Internet witch hunts, you give people uh, literally anything and, and they'll just they'll just jump on it. Right. So. Um, but. Uh, OK, well, now it's a very interesting question, because now it's like. Uh, now U.S. chess is a real, like, it's like worse than it was before. Now it's like terrible. Now it's like people are actually canceling their memberships and saying they're not going to renew. That's a big problem. U.S. chess obviously relies on memberships to uh, to fund themselves. Jen Shahadi also resigned, like, I think it was 10 days ago from the board or from her position. So she still had, like, she had hope 
that things could be better. And so when she resigns, then that's that's really bad. Which I mentioned last week, right? It's like you have all kinds of different choices if you've got a problem with an organization or a group, right? You can try and fix it from the inside. You can you can quit it. You can try and create an alternative. You can fight it from the outside. You can just say like, well, it's not that bad and, and ride along and do nothing, right? So there's like all kinds of choices. And so it shows from the timing that she tried to work within for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 clearly. Um, so, yeah, the question and is she what now? At St. Louis for a long time, right? Sorry, what was it? Sorry, I, I, I might be slightly desynced, but I was saying she also worked at St. Louis for a long time, so she obviously had hope there as well, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. of course. Um, but yeah, so now the question is like, what happens next? I mean, it's Sunday as we're recording this. I like I can't see Randy staying on the board for very long. I mean, it's just like just the amount of public hostility towards them uh, just seems mm -hmm. too much. Um, but I feel like it's not just Randy. You know, it, it feels like it's kind of a disservice if just he goes down and then and then that's and then they pin it all on him. <laughs> it's like, oh, he was the only one that it's like it's like the whole system. It's like um of the, uh, you know, people not treating the, the allegation seriously. Um, especially when it comes to things with mm -hmm. kids, it's like, you have to be, you have to be very, uh, proactive with that. Like David, you, you were an actual teacher. I'm sure you had like mandated reporter training. Um, so yeah. like I did as well for people that don't know what that is. Basically it's like, if you're a, a teacher or someone that works with kids and you notice something like signs of domestic abuse or sexual abuse or anything like that you have like a moral duty to report it to your higher-ups and 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 then they should investigate if you think something is is going on with with a kid or something so i don't know this kind of obligation is off, often just kind of baked in mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so um one thing that i've had a problem with Let's just back up big picture with U.S. Chess. I do feel there is an opportunity here to change the system. I do believe that, you know, in crisis comes opportunity. So, for example, I was once a poor IM who had to pay money to USCF to play in tournaments. It was a major factor in me becoming a GM that I did not have to play that pay that yearly sum, which I believe is still around forty five dollars a year. Now, if you're a poor chess player, that's actually a lot of money. And it hurts. So what is that $45 for? To me, it's an absurd sum. What do you get? You get a rating system and a, a, like a magazine. Nobody wants a magazine. This is 2023. Give, <laughs> give me a break, right? Furthermore, like US Chess used to do things like run the US Championship, run the US Women's Championship. St. Louis does that now. That's been going on. I was going to say, time. part of I was going to say part of that $40 used to go to the U.S. Senior Championships Prize Fund. You know, that would have been a good <laughs> reason for you. But, yeah, they handed that off. So they don't do much, you know, at all. And then we have these people doing these. And it's just like, oh, my gosh. So I think this is the opportunity to be like U.S. Chess. You need to go all the way down. You need to get scrunched in your uh, responsibilities even yeah, further. I don't, I don't think it's fair to say, time. like, they don't do anything. I mean, they, they run a lot of national events. They run a lot of like programs. I mean, they clearly do a lot of stuff. It's, it's of course, there's a question if like the money is being used efficiently, but like, okay, but let's get through it. So they do have a rating system. I don't think that costs too much to run, but they got the rating system. They also, can, they they can, just interject yeah. there on the rating system. Yeah. Every time a tournament is rated, the tournament directors have to send in money to pay for That's the game true. being rated. So, That's true. So That's they're also, for every rated game, they're getting paid again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. That's right. So that's even more. And, and what am I talking about here? Let, let me just be big picture. The problem is you have kids and players that want to play. They want to go out and play a first tournament, right? 45 bucks is a huge barrier. And then also on top of that, if you feel there's some corrupt organization, which is looking bad, right? So it's like we have this huge chess boom going on right now. And 
it's going on online, but when I go to the tournaments, the over the board tournaments, it's barely recognizable. And you had this $45 and all this garbage. It's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's like, you're standing in the way, boss, get out of the way. You know, and Randy's just the first to get out of the way, I feel. There's more than one person that needs to get out of the way for US chess. It's And it's been going on forever. And they're always, it's like the weirdest thing is like, we're seeing a little bit behind the scenes that they've been bickering for so long. So long, it's just been this infighting. It just, I'm, I'm telling you, this goes back my entire lifetime. And there was a point at which I was kind of tuned into it, but I tuned it out, but I know that it's been going on. It just has to stop. But yeah. anyways, Kosi, you were going to say they have, they can nominate players to go to like the uh, uh, world events, though, honestly, that nomination happens really through St. Louis because that's where those events are being held, like the world under the, the under 16, the under 21. That kind of thing, right? Um, Wait, no, I don't. So, I didn't. I wouldn't mention any World Youth events. I don't even know what. The USF Youth probably has some held like internationally. I don't think St. Louis has anything to do with the World World Youth World Cadet. They, they they are the ones who officially nominate the players to Fee Day, right? The USCF is. Yeah. I, I don't. Know. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to imagine. You were the one who said they did a lot more. So I was like, okay, boss. Oh, well, I was, I was talking about, about what like they the, do. The national championships, like they do national high school, junior, elementary championship mm -hmm. every year. And yeah. look, I don't know a ton of details, but I always see stuff about them doing like programs uh, for, I don't know, underprivileged kids, things like this. So like, I'm sure they have lots of uh, projects and stuff yeah. in, in this regard, developing women's chess, like. They run um, a website, they have somebody who helps you if you have issues with FIDE, who does like title applications and stuff like that. Well, let's um, talk about the helping develop women's chess. That's an interesting point. I, we were talk, I had a long walk with Jennifer Shahada there at the US Open, and she said the obvious. She said, I've been trying to get funding from these rich people for US chess. And they're like, you know what, Jen, if you had your own organization, I'd give you money gladly. But this, I can't give it to this. I can't give it to this organization. You know, so obviously something like that could be part of a nonprofit organization that has nothing to do with U.S. chess. Get get rid of that obligation, U.S. chess. You have lost you have lost your mandate there, my friend. And all these other ones too. get it out. Take it out of their hands. Do you guys know if the board gets paid? Is that a I paid don't. position? I don't know. I, I'm, I don't think so, but they do have actually an incredible bureaucracy. It's very surprising. Like they have employees. What those employees do, that's a mystery to all involved, but they have a significant amount of employees that they are paying. I mean, as far as like what the US CF should be doing, to some extent, it depends on what its members want it to do. And quick question to you guys, have you voted in many US chess elections? No. I, I, might have voted, I might have voted it. once or twice. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like one of the bigger issues, I feel like this comes up in a lot of organizations. I have some experience with the Southern California Chess Federation, which is also very bureaucratic. And there's a lot of like infighting. And from yeah. my heard, I've never really been invested in U.S. chess politics. There's, as you guys have said, been lots and lots of infighting on, on the board, like for, for many, many years. And I feel like this often happens when people are, especially if they're doing a job that they don't get paid for, but they have like some kind of power. Yeah, it gets all like bureaucratic and there's a real disconnect um, between like the actual US chess members and then, and then the board. And uh, yeah, I don't even know like how the elections are, are run. I remember meeting Randy actually, I met Randy one year at the US Open like many, many years ago. And uh, he was very nice to me in person. <laughs> My impression of him was that he was like a politician. He's just like very, very nice. But I like I have no idea if this is like who he is or it's just like his like political persona. <laughs> it's, like very, it's very hard to uh, to tell. Yeah. Well, like you, Kosti, I voted once or twice. And it is sort of a thought that in theory, the board members are elected by the members of the US CF and um, you know maybe we have some some control or some influence there on uh, on who runs US CF 
despite which I think in general, the board has not been the best uh, historically. You know, I don't, I don't know if we want to talk about this, but I'm not sure that Randy is particularly an outlier in terms of like the quality of the USCF board. Well, but yeah, let me I don't just know much about the board. Mm -hmm. Let me just add a question uh, for me in the chat. If USCF disappeared tomorrow, what would replace it? And I would say you got a rating system, right? So they could have that, right? And then the stuff like women's chess, that's nonprofit. Right. The board, which is unelected, can deal with there. Sometimes they have to vote in fee day elections. I'll give them that. Right. Mm -hmm. That happens like once every gazillion years. And then um, it would cost, let's say, five dollars for adults and youth would be free. And then you get rid of all that bureaucratic stuff that they have going on. No one knows what those people do. Right. And it has to be cheap and it has to be a skeleton crew. Because there's not that besides the rating system, there's not that much they actually do. They don't mm -hmm. need to like you look at the U.S. Open. That's like they're supposed talking about tournaments. They do. They do the U.S. Open. OK. And uh, that can be organized by other people. Right. You know, yeah. like the, they the national, have a, the, the scholastic championships as well. Those the ones they just bid out. Right. Those are big cash cows. They bid them out. They don't they actually bid them buy out. Them. Yeah. But as Jesse okay, saying, that's fair. That's fair. Were they really like. They reserve the hotel and you know hire the tournament directors and stuff. I think is the U.S. Open is like the main. Right. Yeah, and to be honest, U.S. Open is not like the greatest tournament in terms of uh, uh, conditions. Like the first round I was playing this year, first first two round no first round yeah they had us in like a, a COVID room. It was just like everyone was just so like packed in. I'm like on board three of the U.S. Open and I'm like like elbow to elbow. <laughs> There's like so many people in that room. And Jesse and the U.S. seniors, they got to play in this huge auditorium. And I don't know why we weren't allowed in there. It was, I was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, but we do need a U.S. federation that can deal with FIDE, I believe. I mean, FIDE deals with the country as, as a whole. If we just had 50 states, I mean, it would be quite mm -hmm. chaotic. I mean, I think if we each reflected on it, we would each be able to come up with a list of more than one thing we would want USCF to do. Like we all want them to run the the ratings list, right, and rate tournaments. But, you know, should they provide a USCF set of rules? Should they provide any training to tournament directors? Should they vet who is or is not a tournament director? Um, I don't know. If you If you think about it for a day, you'll start coming up with some things you'd want the National Federation to do, and everyone will have a different list and that's why in theory then you know we sort of vote in some representation and they shape the mission of of uh the organization yeah i feel like there has been good people that have ran for the um the board um the yeah, problem Greg is was on the board they um they might not win and uh and maybe you know winning takes certain things that good people are not willing to do so it's like, yeah, they just don't get there. Greg made it. I don't know like the full list of who's been on the board or anything like that, but of people who I know, that's an example of somebody with absolute integrity, who I really trust, who made it onto the board. So it's possible yeah. to have people on the board who are fully like, you know, well-intentioned. And if I understand correctly, I could be wrong, but I feel like I remember Greg saying that he quit because there was just too much bs so i feel like that's what would happen if <laughs> you know someone joins they try to make some change because yeah if there's i don't know one or two non-bureaucrats or whatever on a board of eight it's like yeah well it's hard to uh, accomplish much got mated time to check out the chess dojo training program so one thing that we were talking about last week and it was kind of floated as a um moral question and especially touching me and Kosia was yeah. should me and Kosia like uh you know stop doing business with St. Louis. Kosia's doing a lot more in St. Louis, you know. And then this thing happened and then an interesting step was taken by Ben Feingold to say I'm not doing no more USCF. Now it's got to be said for Ben, he's not playing any tournaments recently. <laughs> the guy has played tournaments in a long time. So I don't know how meaningful it is, but it was an interesting step and it kind of uh, reflected what we we had talked about. It was like, well, is this something where 
we are in some ways uh, culpable just as side characters to this whole plot by continuing to um, participate in it. Now, one of the things I, I criticized both Lee Chess and Chesscom for was they didn't say like what they wanted. And what I liked as a negotiating point of view, right? And what I liked what Feingold did is at least he said, listen, I'll come back when this Bauer guy is gone, but this is too much for me. This guy's got to go before I come back. And at least if, if I was going to do something like that, then that's the kind of thing I would like to then actually do, because then it, it gives, it puts the ball in their court to actually do something about it. With St. Louis, by the way, it's a lot less clear what a first step should be, whereas for at least for U.S. chess, it's clearly this guy has got to go before anything else happens. I don't think he's going to leave, by the way. Asking them, asking them to publish their self-investigation would be also a reasonable thing to ask for, right? If you think that Randy Bauer is just one person and that switching him in or out is not really going to change mm -hmm. uh, how well USCF can respond to and deal with uh, this kind of problem in the future, right? Yeah, you don't think the board is going to put pressure on Randy. Usually in the movies, when something happens, the board has a meeting. Uh -huh. and they're like, Randy, you got you got to step down. <laughs> Everyone's just kind of like. <laughs> but no, I'm saying I don't think so, more... because he's uh, in there. They can't force him out. And he's already taken up such a he's doubled down on his defensive position that he's done absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, and my experience with people like that is they don't suddenly have a change of heart. You know, they've he's already decided that he's in the right. Um, so it, well, I mean, we'll I'm just saying getting rid of him doesn't. No, it doesn't do much. No, but it's um, it, it, it right. kind of has to happen as at least a symbolic act. Right. Sure. Whereas like, but I think, you know, asking them... sorry, I think asking them to release the report would be like an even more constructive step, right? Like show us that you really didn't make a mistake or show us what really happened. <laughs> as far as your records of yourself. Well, on that account, it's hilarious because this guy, Randy, was like uh, d directly contradicting what Jen was saying, that he was saying, we didn't get a report. And Jen was like, boss, uh, excuse me, <laughs> it's right here. So it was like, yeah, yeah there's, it's just a total mess, you know, total mess. Um, yeah. Let me just say, I think for me, when I think about US chess, I was talking about, and this is US chess big picture, not just the USCF, but, you know, it's this kind of conflagration where back in the day, it, the whole thing was U.S. chess was so incompetent, they couldn't run the U.S. championships and the other championships that we have to have. And so first it was it was before even St. Louis was on the table, we had America's Foundation for Chess took over. You know, we had a variety of other organizations that stepped in to take that away from U.S. chess. But now the problem is, of course, we're dealing with a double tornado here because the, the person to really pick up the slack the organization would be st louis but st louis is in the exact same position and st louis has not come clean at all right like we were talking about with the people there there's nobody acknowledging guilt there's nobody even giving self-reflection so um i don't know what the next step there is in st louis you know and st louis is really like in my mind, the much bigger player, they, they have, they have much more influence. They are doing much many more events of note, right? Like th that's the center of the U.S. chess dude right there. So and may is yeah. on the ground. Maybe he has some thoughts on what's actually happening there. I don't, I don't know. Um, no, I don't know how they plan on dealing with this or what their, what their thing is. Um, but yeah, they are very closely linked with U.S. Chess. That's clear. I mean, U.S. Chess recently moved their headquarters to St. Louis from from Tennessee, um, not to the club. I think they're they're in downtown St. Louis, which is a bit away. But mm -hmm. okay, that same city. That's a pretty big. That's a pretty big step. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well then let's ask the question that Jesse brought up to the two of you after another week of thinking and then seeing what what Ben did. So first we saw that Chess.com and Lee Chess took an action, right, against USCF and St. Louis in, in hopes of seeing some changes. Now Ben is taking action. 
do you two on reflection, do either of you feel like there's something that that you could do or should do or something you're thinking about that you haven't yet decided if you do or don't want to do it? For me, it depends on how they they deal with this like Randy situation. Like I honestly do expect them to release some kind of statement within the next like week or so, just because it's been such a firestorm. It'd be crazy if they literally said nothing about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would expect them to act on on this. Um, if not, that would be that would be pretty disappointing. And yeah, it'd be very hard for me to like um, keep working for them. Like if they just don't acknowledge it whatsoever. Now when you say, but do you, are you working in a direct capacity for US Chess? For US Chess, uh, I do coaching. I, I was recently like right. working at the, uh, the world, uh, not world, the Pan American Youth Championship. So I'll coach these right. like world youth, world cadet events. Uh, mm -hmm. from time to time right right, right. Um, so you would consider basically it obviously I still play right. US chess tournaments mm -hmm. sorry what'd you say so you would consider declining the next chance to coach at one of those events just over the fact that yeah I don't know I mean I'm, I'm torn I'm a little torn up about it because it's like they clearly mishandle this situation um but at the same time if if i don't coach then then who are they gonna <laughs> who are they gonna put it right it's like you know i still it's like me not coaching in a sense is like punishing the kids right by like not now working with them not helping them and i mean i really really enjoy that that role and helping them them win medals and stuff mm -hmm. um but i mean i don't know this whole thing just is so ugly uh mm -hmm. And especially as like more is coming out, it's like how many people did Jen warn about this, right? And it's just like didn't do anything or didn't do enough. So yeah, without change, I mean, I don't know. It it looks really bad for them. So yeah, um, Jesse, are you contemplating any? Well, at possible? you know, I think. Um... First of all, so so uh, part of GM, GMs don't get that many privileges, but one of the big privileges is you don't have to pay USCF member dues. Like I said, that was like a huge, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if you if, if you believe that your city is corrupt and you have to pay taxes, it just hurts. So it was like, <laughs> for years, it was like, oh, when I was at IM, I was paying those taxes and I was just like, oh, this really burns me up, you know? <laughs> um, so I don't what it would mean it would be just a purely symbolic thing for me um and for ben he's not playing anymore and i don't know what it would mean it would mean what i wouldn't play in the events or i i don't know what it would mean in that case um and then with st louis i mean it would let me just say it's been a huge goal of mine in a lot of ways the only meaning left in my life was to play this u.s senior closed event which is going to be there somehow like july next year and it would have to be really bad for me not to play there. i would let me just say this i want st louis to have some kind of reflection and that right now they're they're not doing it um and they got like christian yelled at me basically you know basically ca called me it was like not cool bro is what he said and i wasn't trying to you know i'm just asking for reflection and they need to come out and do something right saying what's going on and because basically they have the same defensive posture that us chess does and they also wailed on jen they were just both of those organizations were like jen you can't you know they were so mad at her for going public and it just looks worse and worse so something has to give in St. Louis. Well, it's been six months since what, uh, since Jen went public. So I think we can imagine that neither organization has any plans to come forward with any responsibility or any meaningful new policies. So, but, I mean, but, either we kind of go along with but bar, we are, or we... Nah, the pressure is just continuing to grow though it's might, might have been six months ago but like the lead chess article came out i don't know a couple of weeks ago right and that yeah, was also huge. i don't know that like more investigations aren't ongoing okay 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's still happening. Oh, to me, six months is a long time. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Oh, I've also done commentary for US Chess on some of their events. Um, But yeah, I want to say there's, I think I said this last week, but yeah, there's lots of good, like everyone I've worked with in US Chess, I feel like has been great. And I don't, I actually, I don't even think I've interacted with anyone on the board, like in a professional setting. That's how low I am. I'm like interacting with people well below the board. Um, right. And so. Well, maybe yeah. you should file a complaint about me to see how it gets handled. And that'll give you some insight into, into how they're handling complaints now. Um, yeah. I mean, that would be uh, one big change if they have some kind of new system for complaints. Although it feels like the issue is not the, the formal complaint system, but rather just like the, I don't know, the, the phone call complaint. Like if someone calls one of them up and says uh, some stuff about someone and then they don't look into it and then you call them again and then they don't look into it. You know, that's, that's what it sounds like kind of happened. But clearly, there was a formal complaint about Timor, which they even assessed to be accurate. They took sanctions against him, but never warned anybody mm-hmm. in the public about it or mentioned it. Right? So, yeah, I don't know the the details on on the grave case, but um, but yeah, yeah, maybe their their formal complaint system also needs to be just completely, completely revamped. Yeah, and maybe uh, in closing, I think it's important to just note too that this thing that really started in the U.S. is finding amazing reverberations in England, France, and Germany, at least, right? And I mean, the English Chess Federation, oh my God, they're in a similar turmoil where it's just like, oh man, here we go. That's a great point. Yeah, Yeah, the U.S. Chess Federation is not alone in like, you know, uh, this kind of stuff. Like, not treating allegations seriously, protecting abusers uh, and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, my friend uh, Sabrina Chavanis has been posting tons of stuff about the, the English Chess Federation, and lots of stories and similar stuff of like people complaining about, I don't know, prominent players acting inappropriately and then them being protected. The Federation's not really doing anything about it. FIDE as well. I'm sure, uh, you know, people keep saying they're employing people that are not in good standing. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, all right, you yeah. guys, I have a feeling that's not the end of it. That's not the end of it, just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one, one, one small point maybe to make is I think a lot of these organizations it's completely new to them to handle this stuff like for years they basically probably just didn't handle it and didn't have a method for handling it right so it's new for them to come up with a system of of what they want to do and how they want to do it so we'll we'll see what they come up with so far not promising um all right folks we gotta uh wrap it up thanks for listening we'll be back uh I don't know about next week, but we'll we'll be back next time with another episode. (laughs) 